In this video, we're going to engrave this bluestone paper using photo mask resist. We're going to show you how to engrave it using 5mm resist and 6mm resist. We recommend 6mm resist for this process, but we'll show you that you can use 5mm as well. So the difference between SR3000 and SR2000 is this. SR3000 comes with the adhesive already in the film itself. So once you've washed it out, it's, it's sticky and it'll stick on. With SR2000, which starts at 6mm thickness, it's, there's no adhesive on this film. You've got to apply the adhesive. So to apply the adhesive, you'll use our RZ2 adhesive. Uh, if you're using a spray gun, you use, if you're using a spray gun, you use RZ3. If you're using the, uh, the brush method, you'll use RZ2. Both very similar, it's just different um, velocities. All right, so um, let's go and apply this glue to the 6mm resist and we'll get underway. So we're going to do uh, the 6mm resist using a spray gun. First thing we need to do is give the bottle a really good shake up to get it mixed up. This is RZ free adhesive. We're using a small airbrush style spray gun and Beth is just going to put some nice light coats over the resist. Try to keep it nice and even. You can see the resist has gone a little bit on the milky side. What we've got to do there is let it tack off now. Once that milkiness disappears, you know that it's tacked off and it's ready to go. So this method is going to be uh, brushed on. We're going to use the RZ2. This glue is a little bit uh, thicker than the RZ3, so it's the one that you use for brushing on. Give it a good shake. Then you can be canned into a little cup. And using a basic paintbrush, we do sell these brushes, but you can get them anywhere in a hardware store. And again, the trick is just a nice even coat. Try not to have sort of blobby streaks there because obviously uh, it'll take longer to get through that bit. It probably won't make much difference, but uh, good practice is to just get it as even as you can. And there you can see a pretty good example of that. Let it tack off. Once it's tacked off, it's ready to go. Bluestone pavers often come in and they're pretty dirty, so it's a good idea to hose them down, uh, wash them down with a bit of water, maybe even a scrubbing brush if you need. Once you've got that cleaning done, a little bit of metho over the top will just clean any grime off it. You can see there it was pretty quick action and it dries up pretty quick. The next thing to do is that we need to heat the stone. Heating the stone removes moisture and warms the surface up, which helps the resist to stick better to the stone. For bluestone, you don't need to heat it very much. It, it heats up pretty well, and if you overheat it, it's going to uh, the resist will react to that and it'll kind of shrivel. So just a nice uh, light coating. I can just touch that. It's just reasonably warm, uh, and you're good to go. Application of the resist is just like any job. Uh, it doesn't matter what material, it's the same application. You get it on nice and straight and then use a burnisher tool and squeeze it down. Obviously, uh, it's going on the stone and it's going to get a CNC sandblasting machine banging over it, so you want to get it down nice and tight, just like you, you do in any situation.
All right, so we've re removed the cover paper. Now we'll just have a good look at it and make sure it is pushed down properly. We'll use a little wire burnishing tool, which it breaks the bubbles on the membrane. If there's any bubbles there, sometimes the bubbles are on the edge. Uh, so that could cause potential blower. So just give it a good run over with the wire brush and then just uh, give it another another burnishing down and you are good to go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we've got to set the level of the vacuum head. When we're using photo mask, we use a little piece of white paper so that we get the tiniest separation between the brush and the photo mask. So just slip in a piece, we're just using a piece of A4 here, slip it in and then you bring your brush down to a point where it's just grabbing hold of that white paper. You'll be able to feel the tension there, but it's just holding it, but you can obviously you can move it out pretty good. So now your brush is just raised about a paper width above the, uh, the resist surface. This just prevents uh, any brush that gets a bit of grit on it or something, just lifting a tiny corner like in the middle of an E or something like that. All right, the next thing to do is to set the pressure. So over here, <coughs> we're going to set this regulator at about two bar. Once the machine is operating, this regulator here should say around about 1.5 bars. So you're sending it out, you're sending it in at two bars, but the operational uh, pressure will be about 1.5 bars and that's all you need for this type of work. I just want you to have a look at the colour of these two resists. You can see the 5mm is darker and the 6mm is a lighter colour. In fact, what it really is, is the, it's the exact same colour, it's just that 6mm is a bit thicker, so its transparency is a little bit less. Again, we recommend using 6mm when you're doing stonework. Uh, you can get away with 5mm, but that little bit of extra thickness does give you that little bit of extra security. All right, next step is to define the field. So we bring that little red laser pointer up into the uh, corner there just so that we make sure that we're starting at the right place. You can see we're set off around about 10 to 15mm offset. Uh, we just uh, press the green button and you can see it's flashing. Once it's flashing it means that the top parameter has been set and we come over to the bottom parameter, we'll move it down a little bit from there and then we reset that. Once that's done, we'll run a contour run which just simply means it's going gonna, it's gonna to just travel the area that we've just defined so we can see that it has been set correctly. You might be able to see that we've put some little black dots on there. That's not a bad idea. It makes it a little bit easier when you're setting it all up. Okay, so the next thing to do is set the number of passes. So for this run, we're going to use uh, four passes. And we're going to set the run speed at 80%. So as we mentioned before, we're going to run this at about 1.5 bar. We're going to do four passes and we're going to run this machine at around about 80%. That's going to give us somewhere around 0.5 of a mil depth, which is pretty much all you need to do for a paver engraving, especially if it's a paver that is going to be walked over. So here's the final result. We've got 5mm and 6mm. 
Uh, they've both been done uh, with around about 0.5 mil, but all the same settings for both of them. And as you can see, it's come up quite crisp. We've done a bit of gold fill in there to give it a bit of contrast for you. Um, so there you have it, 5 mil, 6 mil. This is the Resist photo mask. They also have a 9 mil photo mask, which you can use. It's more expensive. Uh, however, it will be able, you'll be able to go deeper in the film. Now, just one thing I wanted to say about bluestone, because it's this very porous stone. There's not many stones like this, but in the case of bluestone, you can end up with a bit of a, it's like a sort of a darkened stain around the sandblasting area. It's just from the heat and the transfer of the, uh, the adhesion. Uh, five mil, there's more of it than there is in six mil, um, probably less in nine mil. But it's also in vinyl, so it doesn't matter which mask you're using, you tend to end up with a bit of a bit of a stain. And you can get that off by just washing it down into warm soapy water. Or in our case, what we do is we just get a gurney out and we just give it a gurney, that's the final clean, and you end up with this lovely product.